Hi there, it's Ian Thompson of IT Turning Point. Today we're going to look at a short sharp point on Excel 2013, but you can use this in any version of Excel. We're going to look at fixing a cell reference in place. There's a number of ways we can do this. We're going to look at two ways today. One is that we're going to look at using something called an absolute cell reference, which fixes the cell in place so we can use it in functions and formulas and it will never move. Or we're going to look at named cells which is a slightly different way of doing it, and you can name a cell or a range of cells within as a worksheet. So let's have a look at what I mean. Well, we're going to use this sheet I've got open, which has a commission rate up here for these salespeople. And in the commission column, we are going to put a simple formula in that says we're going to take their total sales and we're going to multiply that by the 15%, and it gives us an answer. We're happy with that answer, we're happy with the formula, so normally we would fill this down and we would get answers for everyone. But as you can see, that hasn't happened. That hasn't happened because if we take this formula up here, which is G8 times G3, and if we have a look at where they sit, there's where they sit. If we go down to the next one, you can see it's G9 times G4, so it's moved down to this one. That's because we're filling the formula down and it's moving the reference to the rows down as we go. So what we need to do is we need to fix this 15% in place. So I'm going to remove all these again by simply deleting them and I'm going to re-enter this formula. And this one we're going to use a absolute cell reference. So the total sales times the 15%. But before I put this in as a formula, I'm going to go up here and I'm going to click before G3 and I'm going to hit the F4 key. And it puts the dollar sign before the row and the column, which fixes that in place. So when I hit enter, I get the same answer as before. But now when I fill it downwards, everyone gets an answer. So let's have a look. We've got G8 times G3, G9 times G3, G10 times G3, G11 times G3, and G12 times G3. So as you can see, the G3 is fixed in place and doesn't move when we fill the functional formula. This is fantastic. This helps us if we've got spreadsheets with things like commission rate or VAT or a particular cell that stays in the same place and has get used in a multiple amount of formulas. The other way we can do it is, if I go down the bottom here, we can say, I want to do this slightly differently down the bottom. I don't want to use this absolute scenario. So what I want to do is I want to click on the 15%. And in the name box over here, I want to click once and I want to call that commission. And I simply hit enter. And you must always remember when you've typed the name in the name box to hit enter uh, to register that name. I'm going to click here now where the answer is to go and I'm going to hit equals. I'm going to take that person's sales and I'm going to multiply it by 15% and watch what comes up comes up with the word commission. So if I hit enter, I get the answer. And now, if I fill that downwards, everyone gets an answer, and everyone is having their annual salary or their total salaries multiplied by commission. And that's called a named cell. That's where we've named this 15% the name commission. And because it's got a name, it fixes it in place, and you can only have the one name within a workbook, so you can't have commission anywhere else. It can only be on this one cell. The benefit of it is if you're away across a worksheet and you're completely off the page and you want to go to the cell that has commission in it or VAT in it, you can drop down the name box and you can click on it and it takes you straight to the commission cell. So that's very useful. We hope that you find that useful. Uh, just a short, sharp point on using Excel and having an absolute cell reference or in named cell reference. Thanks for listening. Bye.